I'm Damon Zell, and it's time for your Eve Echoes Weekly News Update, where we'll be diving into all the happenings of the week. But first, if you can tag that subscribe button and ring that bell, then you too can stay up to date with everything that this channel has to offer. Before we get into everything that's going on in the world of New Eden, I figured I'd give you an update on my son and NICU, and boy, what a few days can change everything. Okay, so since the last video, about a day or two after that, we got the news from the doctor that our son would have to go in for surgery because they were feeling around two hernias. Fast forward two, three days, they couldn't find it, therefore he does not need surgery, and he's now growing in leaps and bounds. Uh, the feeding tube has been removed, he is now bottle feeding, and uh, we're on schedule to take him home either Monday or Tuesday. So he finally gets to come home out of the NICU. Thank you everyone who has sent me their prayers and everything else, their, uh, all their goodwill, all their good positive energy towards me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Also, on this channel, we're going to be introducing a new series called Pod Sessions, where myself and another content creator or someone in the community will be discussing an aspect of the game completely unscripted. So there will be wild tangents, and I'm sure it's going to be a good time had by everyone. All right, this week in Sob News, there's been a definite shakeup. Uh, the Sob this past week with the merging of Trimark and False Directory into Pantheon. Pantheon picks up 14 new Sov systems. Golden Horde gains one and loses one. Warp gains one system. ACR gains two systems. The Providence Coalition gains two and shifts three over to Pantheon. The Veil Coalition gains one. And the QC shifts eight over to Pantheon. We had more of the dev questions and answers. And uh, questions have been asked and answered in one of the... The burning questions on everyone's mind is, will there be a separate server for the Chinese players? Now, not a lot of information has been officially given out. However, Sov does have a few videos up on his channel with gleamed info as well as word from Exile. There are fears through some of the community that if this will be a separate server and a forced migration from this server, that it will cut a large chunk out of the already declining player base. Now, as more information comes to light we, and we learn more, we'll have more to give. Via the patch notes this week, we were given word that all TA industrial haulers were getting a significant buff to their cargo in the form of 20,000 uh, M3. However, when the game went live, uh, it was changed that their special holds were getting this buff. And uh, the community is a little outraged by it. This was a ninja switch, as the devs so fondly love to do. Many players, alliances, and corporations started buying these up pre-patch and building a bunch to supply the demand, but were slapped in the face with this ninja change, and were now out of resources and a stockpile of now semi-worthless ships. This buff was going to be a huge step forward in giving the community what they desperately wanted, but again, we were all met with disappointment. They gave out compensation of 20,000 skill points, but that to me is yet again another slap in the face to all those that went all in on these changes. Time for your Plex market report. Plex again is on the rise as it touches 1.7 million per Plex. There's no stopping this, it's just going to keep rising and rising, people. The Golden Horde lost a solve bearing Citadel to Genesis Federation earlier this week. It was a decisive victory and one that may have raised the morale of the players and could give them the full momentum they need in this war. This battle was fought on two fronts in separate encounters. Blood Horde brought in a fleet of just over 100 ships to try and obstruct the Pantheon fleet forming up in NOL within Delve. Pantheon were nearly on equal footing to the Blood Horde group at the beginning of the battle. However, this would change as a Genesis fleet showed up with 100 ships and a counter ambush after the Golden Horde forces were committed. The NOL battle was a total victory as about two dozen Horde ships were only able to retreat. The second battle took place in AMG in Geminate, which was the sovereign space of Xanadu of the Dark Horde at the beginning of the day. When Pantheon-led forces broke into the system, the GHA fleet was there to meet them on the gate. Pantheon forces were able to break this gate camp within moments as the fleet broke ship after ship. This gave the Pantheon fleet the time they needed to disengage and 
warp to the station to get grid superiority. Upon landing on the grid, the Allied forces sat on the station under their nightmare bubble as the remaining Golden Horde forces sat at distance picking off stragglers and disconnectors. During this fight, the Golden Horde lost 15 of their 20 battleships that they brought onto the field. Pantheon forces were disappointed that the Golden Horde did not field a nightmare for this engagement as they had brought multiple nightmares for the anchoring battle in WX last week. The fight ended with a Pantheon-led victory and a Golden Horde Sob Citadel exploding in glorious fashion. The Citadel Killmail was secured by the Genesis Federation leader, Mamasaurus Rex, on her alt. Now this battle wasn't without its usual culprits of large fights such as the Wag, Weapon Cycling, Disconnects, and Black Screen. However, Tie-Dye was not triggered at all for this fight. Genesis the other day also reinforced the Citadel Golden Horde dropped within Esoteria, and when the CTA was called by the Horde to defend ex expecting Genesis to take the, uh, the armor timer, they were in fact already en route to the north to meet up with a larger Silent Federation fleet to take out the Fireflies Citadel in KV Tech 8SN. From what I've been told, it was a solid victory by Silent destroying the 15.9 billion Citadel and removing a soft point from the map. Hundreds of billions in damages to the Fireflies, but according to their pilots, they didn't want that Citadel anyways, as no CTA was called for its defense. This war just keeps on chugging along, even though we all thought it stalled out. Now, there have been reports of gate gun exploits in Losec. Now, I'm getting conflicting reports of two separate styles. I have one group telling me that it is a group attacking battlecruisers, battleships, and basically anything without getting a criminal timer. And I have another camp saying that that's not the case. They're using a much cheaper small ships to scram those ships and then using high alpha damage to pop the ship while aligning out before getting hit by the gate guns. Obviously, the first would be an exploit, whereas the second is working as intended, working around the Concorde fire. But in both reports, it is the same corporation that has been doing the killing, and that is Killaban Brotherhood, ticker K1LA. Now your super sleuths, Sov RPG and Nina, the mod, are looking into this, trying to get footage and find out exactly what is going on. Disarray and a shakeup within Yeet leadership this week as egos collide and power grabs are issued, leaving a lot of members choosing to leave and form a new entity in the form of another Merc Corporation called GF. No safe words. I'm told that during this shakeup, a founding corporation was kicked out of Yeet and given three days to move assets or join another corporation within Yeet. It seems this all stems from differing points of view on the future of Yeet between Shura and Epitaph. Standings were changed and reflects being blue to both sides of the current Grand War. What will become of Yeet moving forward is unknown, but we will keep an eye on the turmoil going on in that region. In an act of payback for killing a PEW pilot and bragging about it, Pew forces found and killed Icy Emperor's Nightmare. It was a good fight with Pew acknowledging the powerful tank he had as it took them 10 minutes to get it down. And on a sad note, my corporation, Atlas Empire, which has been around since the first beta, closes its doors this week, with most of its players shifting off into other corporations and other alliances as I become, yet again, a space homeless hobo. But don't worry about me, I'm going to land on my feet like I always do, and I'll bring you the news each and every week. And big kills of the week, we start off with having this 8.1 billion Balgorn kill. Boop grabs a Rattlesnake for 17.5 billion, a Dominix for 1.9 billion, and an Armageddon for 1 billion. Nova grabs a 1.4 billion Dominix. Pale Horse claims a small Tempest at 902 million, and a 1.3 billion Dominix. No Police Stop gets a 2.8 billion Armageddon, as well as a 14.3 billion Nightmare. Genesis nabs a 10.3 billion Macarial, and Suck kills a 7.9 billion Bestower. No stranger to the solo kills, Dark Knight V01 sends in this group kill of a tasty 4.2 billion Badger. And now the solo kills of the week and a chance at a free Omega combo. 
First, some honorable mentions. Empire 137 has this 2.1 billion Cinnable kill. Now, I know it's an older kill, but I forgot to add him in the running in the last two to three weeks. Uh, and then forgot about it in the last video. So, I am sorry, man. And here is your glory. Bad Ram, the Terror of Syndicate, goes on a rampage this week. However, still uneligible for the free combo due to winning it within the last 30 days. Now, he sends in this 2 billion Dominix kill and this 8 billion Balgorn kill. Some solid solo work right there. Third runner-up is Angron with a 1.5 Procure kill. Second runner-up is Nabizni Plamen with a 4.8 billion Loot Pinata. And the first runner-up is Tupat with a 8.2 billion Executor. Now, the impressive thing is that he got it with a Macario. And finally, Keen Displeasure wins this week's free Omega combo with an impressive 9.9 .9 billion Sigil kill. I hope you were able to scoop up that outpost. Get with me on Discord to receive your prize. Now, if you need more news in your life, be sure to check out our affiliates. Frankie over at Eve Echoes Radio, Rambo at the Echoes of New Eden Podcast, and the Almost Daily Stories in written format at the New Eden News. And that's our show. So, for me, have a great week. Have a great weekend. Fly safe. And remember, we're always one vision, one purpose, one front.